What's happening gamer boys and girls? Today we're talking achievements. Those special little baubles on the side panel of my computer that says to the world, hey, joke's on you, I am good at something after all. Yes. Suck it, Dad! I don't mean to brag, but I have every single achievement for both YouTube and Netflix. That's a pretty exclusive club I'm a part of, don't you think? I like achievements so much, I even baked one into this video. So yeah, congrats on that sick achievement, bro and or sis. Anyway, I gotta go. Every second I spend here is the second I could be grinding those achievements in other video browsing apps. So without further ado... play video games. Some might say to relieve stress, to escape to another world, participate in a power fantasy, and some might even say it's to accomplish something. Depending on your answer, you might have a negative or positive opinion on achievements. One surprising argument I've seen a lot of from my friends is that they're intrusive, becoming frustrated with them constantly breaking into the screen to tell you something pointless. It breaks the immersion to have a pop-up tell you that you passed the tutorial. That is an interesting criticism, but I also think it's a specific one. Are achievements really that big of a nuisance? I actually found the idea so confounding that I wanted to make a little mini video on it. So let's talk. Now personally, my stance has never been negative on achievements. They've never gotten on my nerves. Do I think it's a little pointless when I see an achievement pop up when I got to the end of a mission in Call of Duty? Absolutely. I feel like they should be, well, achievements. Difficult to accomplish feats. When that fanfare and message pops up, it should feel more like a celebration. Oh nice! You found that incredibly hard to find secret ending. Here's a cool little acknowledgement for doing such a good job. Getting out of the tutorial mission isn't worth a celebration. It feels like overkill, does it not? Sometimes it does to me. I mean, I get it. Not every achievement needs to be jumping ropes 1,000 times in a row like in Final Fantasy IX. Come on, BB! Ever wins the game, baby! But I mean, it also gets kinda silly when you look at a list of achievements for a game and it's nothing but past mission 1, 2, 3, 5, 9, 14, etc. But what if an achievement list could help guide the player? I've given a taste of my criticism of open world games recently with my look at Ghost of Tsushima. I even branded some of them as checklist games. But if I had to make a guess, the <clears throat> completionist is the kind of player who gravitates towards the open world game. For them, that achievement list might just be another map, so to speak. But instead of guiding the player where to go, it's telling them what all they can do. Achievements have the potential to act as guides in open world settings. I 100% in Spider-Man PS4 because that game had such a clear list of objectives and I had the information I needed to see how much further I was away from completing the objective. Same thing with any open world game. Let's say you have only a few more hideouts to take care of. You're telling me you don't feel compelled to go ahead and just get those last few to complete the challenge? Maybe not for the sake of the gamer score or PlayStation points or whatever, but as a badge of accomplishment. Okay, now instead of a game where there are several optional objectives carved out and pre-made for you, what about a more linear game? Well, achievements seem like they would be more well suited for optional content in a situation like this. How about when I was playing Bright Memory and I wouldn't have known to go back through the game for a second or third time for additional cutscenes if the Steam achievement list hadn't told me it was a thing? Or how about this gnome achievement for Half-Life 2 Episode 2? You have to take this gnome from the beginning to the end without losing it. And they even brought it back for Alex. It's a total pain in the ass, but it's just another optional objective that rewards you with that special badge of honor if you do pursue it. It might be annoying, but it gives the player a reason to go back through with an extra challenge, especially if the game in question is fun. But ironically, that same mentality is also where some of the contention with achievements might come from. If I play a game for hours on end and have done everything the game has to offer, something like one missing achievement for a non-intended self-imposed penalty slash handicap might be a tough bridge to cross just to validate you completed a video game and got a platinum trophy or another thousand points on the old gamer score. Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Xbox 360 had an achievement like this, with an achievement for completing the game using only one of the game's weapons for that playthrough. 
That's like eight playthroughs of the game, all with a limited toolkit, just to show the 100%. In an action game, sacrificing the tools at your disposal for a challenge run is by no means uncommon, but requiring the player to do it eight times for achievements seems like padding. Not a huge deal if you don't really care about that, but an ultra combo on the enthusiasm of those who do. And speaking of action games, Icy is a game I bring up every so often on this channel, but it's because I love it dearly. It is one of, if not my favorite indie games of all time, and it is among one of the few games I've even bothered to 100%. It had its share of achievements tied to going through the game normally, but I also think it's brilliant for having achievements scattered throughout the many multiple endings the game has thus giving a bit of an indicator that something is still left to be discovered. There is a stone that has gone unturned and you should go find it. I get close to completion all the time just because I love to play the games, and it's okay that I haven't gotten them all. There were just fun little extra bits of stuff to do in these games. Alright, multiplayer games. I don't really think achievements are the most fair thing to include in a multiplayer setting, and shooters in specific. They require hundreds of hours and hundreds of kills or objective claims to reap the benefits of that coveted 100%. And it really seems like they only taunt those who are interested in completing the list that come with them. Looking at you, Halo, these games are the king of the hill when it comes to grindy multiplayer achievements. Why do I have to run someone over with a mongoose, Halo 3? Isn't it enough that I spent 57 minutes straight jumping through these rings in the proper numeric sequence after pausing and unpausing the tutorial video 149 times just to get your stupid hidden skull? <laughs> Classic games are a strange beast. Xbox has an extensive library of backwards compatible games on the Xbox Store, but none of them from the OG Xbox days have added achievements. Meanwhile, PS4 implemented a PS2 on the PS4 style of backwards compatibility, and those titles feature trophies. Is either approach wrong or right? No, not really, but it is really a difference in mindset. Seemingly, Xbox believes that classic games should feel just like that, higher resolution ports of the player's childhood and teenage memories. Whereas PlayStation thinks new trophies add incentive for players to try out older games with a new batch of shiny rewards included. Now, writing this script, it's funny. The two of us actually lean in opposite directions as to what the right approach is. You either fall into the camp of liking the added reward for replaying a retro title, or you find it unnecessary. I will say though, I don't care much for achievement slash trophies added for optional challenges 100% of the time. I think doing a knife-only run in Remake is super cool and demonstrates a lot of skill, but I don't really want the remastered versions featuring an achievement for doing so. I suppose the line gets drawn wherever you draw it. But what do you think? Do you like having to go get the best ending in Sonic CD on the 360 just so you don't feel the OCD clawing at the back of your mind over missing one achievement out of 20? I know I do. Or do you only wish every action game had a trophy for never hitting a single enemy? Let me know down in the comments below, or if you want, tell me your proudest achievement slash trophy. Mine was definitely beating that stupid Green Hill Act 1 in under a minute and 30 seconds or whatever in Sonic Generations. Glad it's done, because I'm never doing that again. But anyway, I appreciate you for watching, so as always, thanks for stopping by and have a great day.